This young man starred in uh, two of the biggest money-making films in history, Saturday Night Fever in Greece, and uh, critic Pauline Kael, who can be kind of tough, said of his recent performance in the movie Blowout, quote, and I quote, I wish you'd said this about me. He has a vibrating physical sensitivity like that of a very young Brando. That's not bad. Would you welcome John Travolta? I'm trying to remember the last time we, you were on the show or we talked. It's been quite a while, hasn't it? Well, I met you uh, right before Welcome Back, Cotter. In the, That's right. Before it ever aired or, or anything in the, in the lobby here. Absolutely. Yeah. Has it been that long? Yes. We have not seen each other talk since then? No, I did the show with uh, David Brenner about four years ago, I think, right after, Wel uh, right after uh, Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> I've got to start showing up on this show. <laughs> You weren't bothered, obviously, by the uh, air traffic unless you flew your own plane. Well, I yes, uh, uh, we were uh, totally canceled. The, uh, yeah? We were uh, third or fourth in, uh, where in you, line. Yeah, where were you supposed yeah. to fly out of? Oh, well, I've been traveling a lot, so we yeah. were leaving New York. And um, uh, we were canceled, so we had to go VFR, which is uh, different from uh, yeah. the... Uh, this is pilot talk, you know, uh, visual flight rules. Rather than yeah, so you right? fly below 18,000 feet. Did you, somebody told me you got your Jets uh, yes, sir. pilot license. Uh, I was uh, very proud of that. Uh, it took uh, about three weeks, and I went to Texas to do it. And, and uh, it was a dream, a, yeah. a lifelong dream to be a jet pilot. And I became a captain. And uh, hey, that's not bad. That is not easy. That's uh, very difficult. Uh, Ed is a pilot, and I'm a pilot, but I'm not checked out in Jets, because that takes a lot of time and uh, you, a lot of training. Yes. Now, I couldn't get a job with an airline because I'm a dropout, high school dropout, but... Uh, <laughs> but you, you're captain of a but jet. But I'm a captain of a jet, yes. Yeah. I saw your picture then. I really enjoyed it. it Thank was you. A, it, it was a good picture. Um, you wanted to be an actor, somebody told me. I know you've asked, answered so many questions the last few weeks, but somebody told me when you were just very small. Well, uh, my uh, family's a theatrical one. Right. And uh, so the inspiration was there from uh, early on. Yeah. Did you say your, your, your family, Bo on yeah. both sides of the family? Yeah, no, well, not my father. He was uh, more of a, uh, an athlete, a yeah. semi-pro type athlete. And uh, uh, so the inspiration for my mother and my sisters and my brothers were always, uh, it's always evident. The story is you'd go down, I don't know if it's true, in the basement or the cellar. And play, oh, and perform, play parts. Yeah. Sorry? Well, my uh, parents were the best audience, of course, early on. And then at uh, six or seven, I uh, graduated to inviting the neighborhood in. And uh, then at 12, uh, local theater, and then uh, semi-professional and professional. What was your first part? I was talking about, about our producer's first part in a high school um, play. What, what, did you, what did you play? Do you remember? Uh, a Frank D. Gilroy play. It was uh, uh, Who'll Save the Plowboy, I think it was the name of it. And I played uh, this kid was, that was a, an imposter son of the leading man. Right. Uh, it's a pivotal role. Yeah. <laughs> a crucial character. Yeah. Yeah, everybody always remembers if they're a performer their very first appearance. I can remember I played a, uh, I played one. Of, well, we talked about playing the bee in the health page, and that was a disaster. <laughs> I guess I could tell that story. No, sure. I, yeah. I, I, there was a health page, and I played a bee. Yeah. And what you have to do? My mother had made this costume. It was beautiful. <laughs> Did you have any duties? <laughs> I remember a lot of the young girls. This is an elementary school, very small. The girls played flowers, and I would flip. <laughs> And the idea was, the idea was you were showing how the bee, how the bee uh, worked with nature and yeah. pollinated the flowers, yeah. and it got out of hand at rehearsal, <laughs> and, and we canceled the play. Anyway, it's a... <laughs> Jimmy Cagney, somebody who I've met once or twice, who everybody who meets falls in love with, uh, you know quite well, and has been kind of instrumental in your career in a way, right, as, as a friend. Yes. How'd well, that come about? Well, uh, he had been an idol of mine my whole life. Yeah. And at uh, five and six years old, I would try to imitate him from uh, Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and sit in front of the television set and try to mimic him and that kind of thing. And, uh, I'm sure a lot of the young people do that with Greece with me nowadays, but sure. then it was, it was, it was Cagney. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd always wanted to meet him. And, and then one of the um, opportunities uh, one gets to have in my position would be to meet celebrities like right. yourself. Yeah, well, every four years yeah. we say hello. 
And I have to limit these, of course. And I finally met him, and he, uh, we got on very well, and we uh, kept up a friendship. He's a great gentleman, isn't he? Oh, yes. Never misses a trick. He, yeah, and he, he has... He, he sees and hears everything that goes on. Yeah, and he has um, absolutely no um, aspirations to be, and, and even when he was a huge star, he looked at it just as a job. He said, you go to work, you do your lines, you go home. That's all there is to yeah. it, right? It's a job, like any other job. He never felt like a Hollywood, quote, star. Yeah, he never gave it the significance, I think, that, yeah. that a lot of actors do. Somebody told me this story also that your mother used to threaten you if you were misbehaving or something, that Jimmy oh, Cagney yes. would be it, calling you or something. Oh, she was quite clever, where she would, uh, if I, she wanted me to clean my room or brush my teeth or uh, take out garbage or whatever, she'd just say, Cagney says, she, she'd pretend she had him on the phone. And she'd say... And you bought that? Oh, I, well, I was five. Five? Five. Yeah, okay. Five, a lot of things five. Yeah. And she said, Cagney says, go, go do this, go do that. And finally I said, does he like me? You know? <laughs> but, uh... So she'd want you to get you to do something? Yes. It worked. Did I, you really drop out of high school? Yes, sir. Why? Did you just did, did dislike school and wanted to... Well, um, I really, uh, really knew what I wanted to do, and I had been acting for uh, quite a while already. Right. And living in New Jersey was just a bus ride from New York, Manhattan. Right. And uh, it was uh, one of these things where it was so uh, uh, easy to get started and, and to do it that I, I wanted to rush on it. I wanted to get started yeah. early. And um, I already had I'd already worked professionally, so it seemed... Uh, uh, like the right thing Make the to move do. at the right uh, time? My parents were very uh, lenient and open about it, and uh, I uh, admire them for it, actually. Yeah. What's, the big, the, what's been the biggest change in your life since all this fame has come to you? There are, there are certain rewards, of course, mm -hmm. financially and all of that, and uh, you're doing what you want to do, but there are also certain... You can't go sometimes out in public when you want to or things you'd like to do maybe just quietly. Is that the biggest thing of being really recognizable? Well, it, it, it's been this way for about six years now, yeah. so it all seems part of it. I don't really mind it anymore. Yeah. I enjoy myself, and uh, if I go out, I go out, and if I'm recognized, I sign autographs. It, it yeah. all seems natural. It doesn't seem, uh, it doesn't bother me. No different at all, huh? No. Oh, it's different, but I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, seem to, as, as the years go on, I seem to... It seems like a normal part of your life. Now. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay. Well, How about to... you, with what? yourself? I mean, do you find it that way, or...? <laughs> I, uh, no, I, I meant that. Seriously, I mean, do you get... Bombed? I never go out. I stay here. <laughs> I, uh, I have a room in the back, and I never leave. I've not left this building, I think, since, uh, 67. Yeah. 1967. No, I'm teasing. No, I don't mind, really. That's part of it. I mean, does it seem to get easier as time goes on, or...? I still get embarrassed by it. It sounds silly to say that. When people come up sometime in a certain situation and ask for an autograph, I feel a little awkward. I don't know why. Mm. And I remember when I came out to California, uh, one time when I got out of high school, I asked people for their autographs yeah. and felt, you know, not silly about it at all. But I still get a little awkward sometimes. Well, let's exchange autographs. Okay, and... sure. Here's right mine. Here's your... Give me your numbers and I'll give you some old ladies' numbers. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Movie Blowout has a very interesting premise. Uh, you play a sound man who goes out and records sounds which they dub into motion pictures and you're in an unusual situation. When it, you're just, I guess it was a, by design, you were out just recording what, uh, sounds of uh, traffic, for, well, wind I, I, and so I forth. I do uh, bad horror pictures, basically. Yeah. He, he works for this uh, sort of sleazy company. Right. And uh, at the time, uh, uh, I think the, the, this clip that, that you have, uh, basically he stumbles uh, accidentally of what, he, what seems to be a political scandal. Right. And uh, at this point in the picture, uh, the leading lady is in, is in danger, and I'm after her. Yeah, so. and she really is in danger. Uh. Watch this picture. This is a little, little clip from, uh, from Blowout. Watch. <laughs> yes. A little Sunday on the freeway, eh? <laughs> it's a wild picture. How long did it take you to do that chase sequence? Oh, that was a while. That took a couple of weeks, and then we had to redo it because the film on that was stolen. You're kidding. No. And, uh, Are you serious? Yeah, really. Uh, the point of view of my going through that right. parade, the film had was Just stolen. disappeared? Yes. Yeah. And uh, they had to re go back to Philadelphia and redo it. Yeah. So, uh, but just that part of it. Yeah, the, the good one. picture. Hope it does real well for you. Thank you. Somebody told me also that You've got the same thing that Kirk Douglas has, is the cleft in the chin. Oh, yes. <laughs> now, during the picture, somebody said they wanted to... They took... Kirk told me once, and when they first came, somebody says they wanted to 
to oh, cover it up or fill it in or well, something. What for? The cinematographer, I guess, didn't know it was advantageous to have that. So yeah. he said, uh, he's a Hungarian man, a very nice man, excellent yeah. uh, artist. And he said, uh, Brian, he said, the, the hole in his chin, would you like me to get rid of it? <laughs> so, well, they were just going to paste over it the whole thing? Well, I guess he'd light it out or yeah. do something to <laughs> Somebody told me this picture means, uh, means a lot to you, more than, I guess, of the other pictures you've done. I'm proud of this one, yeah. because it was a combination of artists that got together that I'm, I'm impressed with, and, and right. uh, I'm proud of it, yeah. Well, what, what do you see yourself doing 10 years from now? Do you ever, do you ever project ahead and say, 10 years from now, I want to be doing so-and-so, or I want to make this kind of a picture, or...? Well, uh, I, I'd like to maintain a certain success that, that's right. been given, and um, maybe direct. I'd like to direct. Um, keep happy. That's, you got it right there. That's all there is to it. Nothing bad. We'll be right back. Stay where you are.